Hey everyone, we're the Ataris. I wrote a few things out that I wanted to share rather to send them in a bullshit form letter like most bands would do. We'd rather just say them to you personally. That's what we're doing here. So uh, we wanted to record this video to set the record straight about an incident that you may have all heard it happen a couple nights ago at our show in Asbury Park, New Jersey. But what's not seen in the video that you may have seen circulating around YouTube is the incident that led up to this. First of all, where I wish I totally would have handled the situation slightly differently, I do owe it to our fans to explain that there's only so much bullshit that a band can take before finally leading up to an incident like what happened there. Um, I believe in having a good time. You know, being out on tour is about having fun. I don't set limits on my band. If you want to drink, if you want to have a good time, that's up to you. But when we went on stage that night, we had no idea that Rob had been sitting around drinking for like six hours probably since we got to the venue and we walked up on stage it was it, we were just completely surprised when Rob couldn't even play a beat to one of the songs the first five songs prior to the song your boyfriend sucks where I had the chaotic drum freak out was uh, it, it, it was just completely baffling uh, there, there were points where he would stop completely miss a cue, miss a beat, not even play the song altogether. Rob's a great drummer, I'll never say anything bad about my friend, but ultimately, you're there to do a job, it's a fun job, there are so many people out there in the world that would love to be doing what we're doing, I would never take what I do for granted, and I love what I do, and I love our fans, and I want to get that across, uh, it's completely out of character for me to do something like that, but it's rock and roll, shit happens, and where, like I said, I'd like to have handled it differently, um, if you were in my shoes, and you had to babysit a guy for the last two weeks and tell him, hey dude, no more drinking, no more drinking, load your shit up, no more drinking, or, hey, you gotta play the songs, don't get too wasted, you know, ultimately, you're gonna get pissed off, and that was several weeks of build up of us having to babysit a guy, and I'm not gonna throw this guy under the bus, but if he's out there talking shit about us, we're gonna set the record straight that, hey, Go watch one of the five videos of the songs prior to Your Boyfriend Sucks, and you'll see. Ask any of the people in that crowd. I did the best I could. I stuck around, and I took requests. I played songs for everyone in the audience, anything they wanted to hear, and I tried to salvage a show because I was embarrassed for what that guy, I felt, was taking for granted. He was taking our fans for granted. He was taking you for granted. And ultimately, you know, it's like this is our life. This is what we love to do, and we're not going to have somebody else misrepresent us. And that's what was going on. We got up there on stage that night, had no idea what was happening. We, you also didn't see. We went over to him before every song prior to that and said, Hey, man, is there anything we can do? Can, you want to take a break? Do you want to go off the stage, you know, get a breather? You know, everybody has a bad show. We realize that. I have nights where I'm completely sick. On Warped Tour, you can find a video. I lost my voice. I couldn't sing at all. Well, what did I do? I played anyway. I had my buddy Mike Herrera come and sing half the songs for me, and I sang a bunch of covers. We made it work. That's the point. You don't go out on tour and you let your fans down, and then you sit there and make me look like an asshole. Because, hey, what am I guilty of? I threw some fucking drums at a guy. But ask yourself, if shit like that happened and somebody embarrassed you or at least misrepresented what you were doing, I mean, if you look back in this band, it's like, there's ultimately been some substance abuse issues with members of this band. There's a reason why those guys aren't in this band. I want you to come out and have a good time. If we're in a band together, we're here to have fun. And I think anybody else would, would, would agree that that's what we do. We, we go out on tour, we have fun, but there's a certain line that if you cross that and you go up on stage and you can't give a good show to the fans, you shouldn't be playing in the band. And, and where I love Rob and I love to play music with the guy, and I, like I said, I have nothing bad personally to say against the guy. That night on stage was embarrassment to all of us, and it was embarrassment to you, and I stuck around, I gave it my all, I played a bunch of songs for the audience, and that's what we're going to do. We've got one more show tonight in Providence, we're going to go, unfortunately I'm going to have to play it acoustic, and then I have a few acoustic shows next week. Uh, after that, we'll carry on, that's what we do, we're the Ataris, we're going to keep playing, playing shows, we're going to go to Asia in January and February, bring a bunch of shows to Asia for our fans over there, we're going to announce that soon, going to do a huge tour there, and then we're going to finish a record. And for all you fucking naysayers, we're going to have a record out next year, and we're actually going to have a record of some old material that you've never heard out this year. So beyond that, thanks again for sticking by us to all our fans that stuck around that night and watched, watched the remaining songs. Ask any of them. You'll see what happened. Those people will let you know that I gave it my all. I stuck around, played songs for all those people until they were basically chasing us off stage. And 
that's what we're going to continue to do. We're going to bring the music to you and, and represent our fans and, and try to carry the flag for those people that don't have a voice. And ultimately, I don't know, if you guys want to say anything? I mean... <laughs> no? No? Well, I thanks to all the bands are on this tour with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know I forgot something. Yeah, thanks to Far From Finished, uh, who are going to play the show tonight. Thanks to Nothington, Aspiga, uh, Red City Radio, Flatfoot 56. Um, see, it's what, it's what happened. You write a statement and you just speak from the heart. That's what we do. Uh, yeah, Paper and Plastic, uh, our, our good guy, Tom Chichilla, who books us and Screeching Weasel and the Queers. Over and uh, oh, at Over Easy Booking for uh, all those people for sticking by us. And uh, yeah, and most of all, thanks to you. And uh, for the shit talkers out there, hey, whatever. There's, you know, there's more people out there that realize that playing music is from the heart and sometimes shit happens. And uh, if, you, if you're one of those little kids that hide behind a computer screen and sit there and talk shit on people, whatever. Go back to high school. It's not what it's about, you know? It's rock and roll. Look at any bands, you know, the replacements. Look, look at these fucking rock and roll bands. It's like, shit happens. Jawbreaker, Jawbreaker broke up on stage. Come on. It's fucking rock and roll. Anyway, we love you. Thanks again. Take care. <laughs>